Welcome to On The Subject with Mirajur Raman. We're so excited to have you here. So I really want to set the floor for this superstar we have with us today. This young man is from Bangladesh originally, immigrated to Indiana. So we're both Midwesterners. We share that at heart. He is at Princeton University, the number one U.S. news school ranking, Princeton University. What's so special about Mirajur is he used our product when we were a meal learning many years ago. Now we are subject and he has interned with us. Such a talented young man. I was the first person from my hometown to go to Ivy League school, from Cary to Penn. This is the first subject student to go to an Ivy League school. From Lawrence and Emil Learning to Princeton, we're so indebted to have you today. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Thank you for having me here today. I'm doing great. And uh, yeah, you were saying I'm from Bangladesh, uh, grew up in Indiana, also in Bangladesh, and then used subject when I was in high school. Um, this is when it was called a meal. I remember, I remember we were in um, COVID and it was my English class that I actually used a meal for. Our teacher had gone sick and we didn't have a teacher and we were all just kind of panicking. We didn't really know what to do. So oh, this is in junior year. So when I started thinking about colleges, I was like, oh, and I want to go to these good colleges, but I don't have these resources right now and I'm not really too prepared for the AP classes. Having a meal at that time definitely was something that I needed to do well on those AP exams, which then ended up helping me get into Princeton. I can't exactly remember who the professor was at a meal who taught the English class, but her class was probably way more enjoy enjoyable than any of the courses I've taken at my high school. I think what I loved the most was honestly just everything was so short and my attention span was not that good. And I just loved that these videos were less than five minutes and they got to the point and it talked about everything that was going to be on the exam. So it was really easy to understand and really easy to prep for those exams when the time came. Yeah, thank you. I love hearing your story. But tell me more about being a Princeton Tiger. How has the world viewed you differently as a Princeton student versus when you were at Lawrence in Indiana? What have you noticed? Let's go Tigers. Princeton Penn rivalry. <laughs> um, going to Princeton was definitely a change. I was viewed a little bit more differently once I had gotten into Princeton from when I was already in in high school in Lawrence, Indiana. No one really knew me. And I was kind of just that kid in the back of the class that everyone thought was, oh, he's a nerd. He's always taking notes. Uh, he's just always studying. But then once I got to Princeton, people knew that name and everyone was like, oh my God, he was doing it to get into Princeton. And now he's at Princeton. And I think it's, good, it's a good feeling knowing that the work I put in got me to where I am right now. And the the amount of opportunities I have right now to just connect with people like yourself and everyone um, is just so passionate about everything they're doing at Prince. The best thing about going there is just the amount of passion every student and every professor has at that place. So not many people get to accomplish their dreams in life. You've already accomplished one of your biggest dreams. When did you know Princeton was a dream of yours? Um, Princeton became a dream of mine when I knew that it was the best school in the country. I, my parents have always taught me to go aim high and go for the best that there ever was. That just became my dream. That that was the goal I was going to achieve. I was going to get to number one spot, and I did it. Yes, you and, did do it. Yeah, and that was, yeah. I mean, you inspire me. I am so proud of you and so happy for you. When you think about taking an education into your own hands, it sounds like you did things in and out of school. Which I think is really powerful and shows your aptitude and your curiosity. How did you find tools online? Was it social media? Was it friends? How do you find ways to learn online? With my generation, we go to TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and that's where we find all of our news, just scrolling through Instagram or scrolling through TikTok. And so whenever I had something that I didn't understand, I just go to YouTube. Yeah, you use YouTube more than Google to learn about my classes. You wouldn't expect. But YouTube, just seeing those videos helped a lot more than reading or like seeing it put out in like um, book format or like being able to read it. Compared to you, I'm probably looked at as old. You can make fun of me a little bit. What 
uh, social media do you view as old that you would never want to use it? So far, it's a safe okay. space. One social media platform that I haven't used as much as the others is definitely Facebook. So why is that? Why does your generation not like Facebook? I think it's just because we've associated it with our parents using it. That makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, there's a natural rebelliousness and you want to do things differently. Yeah. You want to do something that's innovative and leading the way. Facebook is not a very video-led platform, whereas TikTok and YouTube video-led. Why do you like video better than text? I prefer video over text just because I'm already having to read so much for classes. It's just hard for me to grasp some of those concepts that I'm reading about. I don't know, after a while, after a while of reading, it just gets boring and tiring, and it feels like you have to force yourself to actually grasp that concept. Whereas with videos, you have visuals, you, you know, if they're shorter, you can actually pay attention to it. And if it's interesting, you can see it. And it's, it's just way more interesting than actually reading where it's just no pictures, just words. When's the last time you read a physical book for pleasure? I can't, I can't name the last time I read a book for pleasure. I think, I think the only books I've read were, were for my classes. When's the last time you watched a video for pleasure? I'd say probably this morning. I was on TikTok scrolling around. I love that. You know, we talk about education being the great equalizer. I can imagine, you know, Princeton's amazing. So much diversity, so much opportunity. There's probably not a lot of students from Indiana at Princeton. How have you been able to navigate being one of the few Midwesterners at a school that's heavily dominated by international and Northeastern schools? There are not that many Midwesterners <laughs> at Princeton. It's either all um, international students or students from that area, the yeah. East Coast or the West Coast. Yep. And I think the what I've been doing to navigate that is just making friends. Honestly, everyone there is so open to everything. Everyone's just so open to everyone. And, and it's just such, and it's so amazing being able to talk to people who come from such different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, easy to make friends, talk to everyone. You talk about meeting people from all over the world, how special that is to you. When you look at your own educational journey, you put in so much work. You sacrifice a lot of things. You probably missed out on social gatherings, on some parties to better yourself and have this life-changing experience. What would you tell your younger self entering high school to help push them through some of those hard times and sacrifices about how worth it is to get an incredible education? One thing I would tell my younger self going into high school would definitely be that missing a party or being an event with my friends is not the end of the world. At the time, I would get really upset because I had an assignment yeah. and I'd, I'd have a fear of missing out. It was definitely worth it because now I'm able to enjoy everything. I'm able to enjoy my education and also have a social life um, at the top university. So I think it was definitely worth it. So I and tell myself to not worry about it at all. And university is not a four-year decision. It's at least a 40-year decision. You're not only enjoying your time at Princeton, you're going to have such a wealth of opportunities moving forward that many people never would have access to. One of the biggest challenges in education that scares me is you know, your senior performance can affect the rest of your life. So thankful for you having the maturity and discipline to be able to crush it. We would love to be able to help more students understand what you're doing may feel trivial, but it affects the rest of your life. And we need to help together build the best people and citizens of society. We always love to end all of our shows with love, moments of gratitude. What makes you so thankful to education? What do you love about what it's done for you? The one thing I love about education is the wealth of opportunities I've had once I really narrowed down and found out my passions. I found out that reading books can't, isn't, isn't, <laughs> I found out that I like math. I find out that Unlike my friends, I actually like to do homework. I like education and I want to do the best that I can. I'm so thankful for education, for opening up these doors that I could have never imagined of when I was in Bangladesh or even in Indiana. Now I'm able to talk about it and I'm so thankful for that. Well, we're so thankful for you. You inspire us. You're an incredible student, incredible young man, and you're going to have a great life. And we just hope we could be a part of that and glad we could play a part in the journey. Thank you so much for your time. This is Mirajur on the subject. We can't wait to have you all back for another episode soon. Wish you all the best. Keep crushing it. Go Tigers.